Hello and welcome to today's Cyber Senior Session. Today we are going to be talking about online banking, uh, how you can access it through a phone, tablet, or computer, and how to stay safe on it. But before we get started, I'm happy to say that today's webinar is proudly sponsored by BreezeLine. BreezeLine is the eighth largest cable provider in the U.S., BreezeLine offers internet, TV, and voice services to residents and businesses in 12 states. So before we get started, we're going to see a quick video from BreezeLine. Wi-Fi your way home, powered by Bloom Home Pass. Technology that spreads ultra-fast Wi-Fi to every inch of your home. We make having a Wi-Fi supercharged home easy by including a super pod with your Wi-Fi gateway package. Learn more at BreezeLine.com. All right, and if you'd like to learn more about BreezeLine and what they offer, you can visit them online after this session at www.breezeline.com. And with that, we'll jump right in. All right, so online banking explain. So to start off, let's talk a bit about what uh, online banking is, what it lets you do. So online banking is more secure and advanced than ever. So if you've ever had fears about using online banking, you need not have those. Uh, it is very secure and safe to use. Uh, online banking means that barriers, physical barriers, no longer keep you from doing things like making deposits or paying bills on time. Online banking uh, can also help you achieve independence uh, allowing you to take charge of your financial life and keep in charge of it uh, without needing the help of, of caregivers and stuff like that if you wish to and also you can access online banking through any smartphone tablet or computer so it's super accessible as long as you have at least one of those devices and you can really do it from anywhere so what can you do with online banking? Um, you may be wondering, may not know what the limits of using online banking are, but with online banking, you can do things like check your bank balance at any time, pay bills and transfer money between accounts if you have multiple, check to link more, linked mortgages, loans, savings, or individual saving account, savings accounts. Um, you can also use it to check your bank statements and go paperless so you can stop getting paper bills in the mail and just get everything electronically. You can use it to set up or cancel direct debits or standing orders. You can use it to check investments that are linked to your account. And you can use it to deposit checks that you receive and also transfer money via e-transfer, just electronic transfer. So that being said, there's so much you can do uh, with online banking, um, really saves you from almost ever really having to go to the bank in, except, in the exception of you know, maybe larger transfers um, or de uh, depositing larger checks. Um, but how do you access online banking? So accessing online banking, uh, banking uh, online is accessible anywhere that has an internet connection, really. It is accessible either by the bank website or bank app. Online banking websites are and their apps are protected using end-to-end -end encryption technology, which keeps them safe, meaning uh, you won't have to fear there being a hacking uh, on the end of the bank that would put your finances in jeopardy. However, there are still risks associated with using public wireless net for network accesses, access points. So don't do banking if you're using a public Wi-Fi network. Uh, try to avoid banking in public generally um, and use your own data or wait till you have access to a trusted have access to a trusted network to do your banking. So how do you get started? So you get started by visiting your bank's website or downloading the app. So on a computer, you will have to use the bank website. So you can uh, find the website URL by looking for it on the back of your card. Sometimes, as you can see in the example to the right, uh, the banks do put their websites on there. If you don't find it there, you can always do a Google search. And here we'll show exactly how to do that. All right, so if you have the address for your bank's website somewhere on your card, you can just go ahead into your internet browser, go up to the URL bar at the top and type it in. So let's try 
www.bankofamerica.com and that takes us directly to the Bank of America website and we can see right here that our login panel is right here on the side and all we could do is type in our user ID and then password and then click log in to log in. If we don't yet have an online banking account, there is a button right down here to allow us to enroll, which will then take us through the enrollment process. The first steps of which in this case are to provide your card or account number and then social security. You'll enter those, then click continue and then continue on through the process, which will require other verifying of your identity to make sure that they can safely set up the online banking account to you. Now your other option, if you are going to be trying to find your bank, as I said, was just to simply do a search of it. So a Google search or a bank search, whatever search engine you use. So when you open up your browser, either if you have the search bar right there, you can use it or use the URL bar to type in, say your bank is TD Bank, you can just type in TD Bank and look for the website. Now, uh, it should be one of the first ones that comes up. You can come in here and see td.com. So we'll select this one. And here we are on the TD website. And if you want to make sure that this is a safe and secure website, you're in the right place, go ahead and look out for this little lock icon up here in the top of where the address bar is. Click on that. Um, that should make sure you know that this site is secure. And then as well, if you kind of double click on the address bar, you'll see what comes up is this HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. That is also an important sign that the website you are on is secure. So here we are on the TD.com website. A bit of a different process here for getting to log in. There's actually a log in button that will take you to the login form and then a sign up button if you don't yet have online banking. But if we click login, should take us to the login form. We can then put in our username, password, and then log in from here. Or if you're on a smartphone or a tablet, you can go into the app store if you are on a uh, iPhone or iPad or the Google Play store if you're on an Android phone or tablet and go to the search function and type in your bank or credit union's name in the search bar and download it from there. And that works uh, like this, we'll show it right now. All right, so here I am on an iPhone. This is how you're gonna do it if you're using an iPhone or an iPad. First, we're gonna start by opening up the app store, which on my screen is on the third row from the top and the second row from the right. So I'll click to open up that app. And once we open it up, it should take us initially to the home screen, but we're going to go to the search screen. So we just have to click the search button that's in the bottom right corner of our screen with the little magnifying glass icon. And then what we'll be at is our search screen. We'll go to the top of the screen where we see that gray bar across the top with a little magnifying glass icon again and tap on that to bring up our keyboard. And then we'll simply just type in the name of our bank. In this case, I'm searching for TD Bank. And then we will scroll down and I'm in Canada. So my first option I'm getting is, is TD Canada. Uh, your options will list according to your country. But there it is. I'm going to click on the little icon, the TD icon of it, actually, just to make sure we're getting the right app. I'm going to scroll down a bit just beyond the pictures and you should see kind of small below the pictures it says td developer that is who has created the app so the company td has created the app that lets me know that this is probably the right app for me so then i'm going to go back up to the top and click get to download i may have to type in my password or use face id or my pin to download this app but once i do it should start the downloading process all right now that the app is downloaded um, I can click open from here, but I can also go back to my home screen and just scroll through my, my home pages until I find the app on my home screen app list. Here it is now uh, down in the bottom right corner of the, the main section of the apps. And I should just be able to start my login process right away. Put in my username or access card number 
and my password and click login to start using. All right, now I'm going to go through the same thing, but on an Android device. So on an Android device, you will be going to the Play Store to download your banking app. This is the app that's actually in the bottom right corner of my screen right now. So I'm just going to click on the Play Store. When I open up the Play Store app, the first screen I see actually has the search bar in it. So right at the very top of the screen, that little gray kind of bar that goes across, that's the search bar. I need only tap on that to bring up my keyboard. I can then type in the name of my bank. We're going to use TD Bank once again as our example. And then I'll click search, which is the little blue button in the bottom right corner of our keyboard. Here we should see TD Bank popping up. Again, I'm going to click on the icon just to open up the app page so I can find out more about this app. And once we're on this page, we actually can see just the developer name right underneath the name of the app. So TD Bank US and then below TD Bank, that's the developer name. So that seems right to me. I feel okay downloading this app. So then I'll just click install. And once the app is fully downloaded, we can either just click open from here to open it up right away or go back to our home screen and look around on our home screen for where it has landed. Here it is, second from the top left corner down, TD Bank, click on that. That should open up the app and we can start using it. All right, so once you have gotten to your banking website or downloaded the app, when you open up the website or app, the first thing you should be able to do is log in. Occasionally, you won't see this login form immediately. You may have to look for a sign in button to, to get to this point, uh, but you'll get to that. Click on that sign in button if you find it. If you see that there's an option to put in your username or card number and password, you're in the right place. Um, however, if you do not yet have an online banking uh, account, you will have to set it up. Uh, and you can go do that by going into your bank to set it up. Some banks do allow you to do that on uh, their website. It just depends um, what kind of security protocols they have. So you may see a, a sign up button. And if you have an existing card, you may be able to link it right then and there. Best bet is when you're first trying to get set up on online banking is to go into the branch and get that account and password set up securely. Now, if you are going to go to the bank to get it set up, to get your account set up. Always make sure that you have your account uh, number or member number, um, your email address that you want to use and have associated with the account and any PIN numbers you may have set on the account already. And when you go to get your bank account set up or you're setting it up, your online banking, have a pen and paper handy so you can record passwords or really any notes that you wanna make on how to, to access that account. Once you do that and you have the app or you're on the website, you'll use your designated username or debit card number to log in as well as your password. And then you'll click sign in. So once you do get into your banking app, get it set up, uh, each banking app and website will look a bit different. Um, it may look something like this on the right uh, where you see uh, your accounts uh, kind of listed uh, on the page. So right, I have uh, on the right, the banking account, uh, a credit card account, some investment accounts as well. And in order to see what's in here, we just can click into any of these sections. Uh, so here's the view on, a, on the app and here's a view uh, on a computer. So pretty much the same, just slightly differently oriented because of the screen size. But say I wanted to click into this banking account, I would just click on it there. And then it would generally take me to a page that looks something like this. So it looks kind of like your printed, your printed bank statement when you get it. So at the top, you can see your, your current balance, your available balance, if there's any holds on the account or anything like that. And if it's a credit card, you'll obviously see uh, your remaining credit and your credit used. And then down a bit further, you can scroll down to see all of your transaction history uh, and you can change the timeline for how far back you're looking there, but you can see any transactions that have occurred. 
Now, one of the main things you can do and, and one of the handy things about using a banking app or a website is that gives you the ability to deposit checks without having to go into the bank. So generally, this is only available on the bank app on phones and tablets. It may be available on certain uh, bank websites as well. Um, for my bank in particular, it's only available on the phone, but this may differ. But in any case, you'll start by going to your bank app, preferably if you have it. Uh, if you don't have a phone or tablet, you can try your bank website uh, and see if you see an option similar there. You'll log into your account, select the option to deposit a check. It should be pretty uh, straightforward and pretty much at the front of the screen. And then what happens is it asks you to take a picture of the front and the back of the check, confirm the details of the deposit. And then what you wanna do after that is just make sure you store your check until it's cleared and you make sure it's gone through. Note that this process is secure and your financial information is not stored in your device. So it is a completely safe process as long as you're doing it at home on a secure Wi-Fi network, which should be your home network um, and in private. Now, uh, we just went through those steps, but let's look at what this looks like when we're actually using the app interface. So when you open up the app and you're looking first for that deposit button, you may have to look around for it. And the first banking app, the deposit button appears under this more button. So we clicked on, on more up at the top and then it brought up a list and then deposit a check was an option. Whereas in the second app, the green one uh, on the right, uh, there was just straight up a deposit button available right at the top of our screen once we clicked into our account. So you may have to look around a bit for it, but it should be pretty upfront uh, in our banking account. Once you click that deposit button, you will then have to uh, verify the account that you want to deposit it into. So here we're going step by step. So the first question they'll ask is deposit two. You can click on that to select the account appropriate account if you have if you have multiple. Uh, you can then enter the amount. So you will be taking a picture of the check, but it does ask you to manually enter the amount, much like you would when you deposit it at the ATM. So enter in the amount that is written on the check, and then you will take a photo of the front and the back of the check by clicking take photo. So you'll click take photo under front of check. They will open up your camera. You'll take a picture like you would take a picture on your regular camera. And then you'll do the same for the back of the check section. Once that is all filled out and the photos are uh, taken, you can just either, in this option, it says to slide to deposit. It may just be a button as well. And then you can click or slide to deposit the check. And it should be, done should get a notification that says it was deposited successfully but again do keep that check on hand for at least a little bit just to make sure that it cleared properly now the other thing that using mobile banking makes it really easy to do is to send e-transfers um, so when you're wanting to do this it's kind of a similar process to doing the deposit you open up the app or open up the website. And this is something that you can easily do on either your computer or phone or tablet. Um, so you go in there, there should be a button much like there was a deposit button, but it should say transfer or send money or something to that effect. So look around for a button that says something like that. Um, additionally, you may have to set up an e-transfer profile as this is not a function that is, um, inherent to, to banks. Um, often banks use a separate service. Um, most commonly Zelle is what it's called. So you may have to set up that profile when you're first doing this. Your app or website should walk you through the process, um, but it may involve you know, confirming details of your account and stuff like that. Uh, but once it is set up, and it is, uh, so you'll look for, like I said, that transfer or send money button. Here's the option here. And this is, I think, in, this is in TD. Um, so you can click transfer or send money. Um, in order to send that money, uh, like I said, most US banks participate in Zelle, which allows you to, uh, for instant bank to bank money transfer within the US, which is really great. So you'll click send money, you get some options. It might say make transfer, transfer history, blah, blah, blah. You can click send money with Zelle. Uh, you can also not only send money using services like Zelle, 
but request money from an individual. Uh, so if you're trying to request uh, a, an amount, like invoice someone, you can do that. Uh, but if you're sending, just click send. You will then need to choose a recipient. Um, so you'll have kind of a list of contacts. If you've never used this before, you'll have no one saved. So you have to manually enter new contacts into your banking profile. So you'll find, should find a button that says add a new contact. You'll enter in that person's uh, name and usually either their phone number, account number, or email. Any should work um, for them to receive that transfer. Then once you've added them in, it will take you to the point where you're going to be filling out the details of how much money you're sending and all these other stuff. So first you'll select how much you are sending. Um, in this case, we'll enter it in right here. Um, then you'll choose the account you want to send it from. So again, if you have multiple accounts, you can choose which account to send it from. And then you might click uh, either, in this case, it's review. This button might also say next. Uh, and then it should also give you uh, an option to, to include a reason. Uh, and in certain cases, it may ask you to ask a security question uh, that the other person on the other end has to answer in order to receive the funds to make sure that it is sending safely and securely. Once all of these details are filled out and you've ensured that they are correct, you can click send and the money transfer should be sent off. Once the person accepts it, it will be transferred out of your account into theirs and just like that. And that works pretty much instantly um, in any bank to bank interactions in the US. Obviously sending money abroad or otherwise is a bit of a different process when we're doing online banking. It still will start from the same area, send money or transfer. Um, and you can usually uh, use other forms to send that money. But of course that might take longer and there may be a fee involved. Where is this? within the country type of transfer is a free service available. Now, though online banking is super secure and banks have their apps and websites encrypted for your protection, there's still things that you might want to consider uh, for online banking safety. So first of all, if you are using your computer when accessing an online banking website, make sure your connection is secure. So the main tip is to look for the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash in the URL and then look for the padlock icon and other things just to consider. So as we said, banks, websites and their apps are super secure. The thing that puts us at risk when we're using banking apps is more so our activity and our devices and how safe they are. So if you don't already have it, um, you may want to consider using antivirus uh, software or firewalls on your devices. And another great tactic to use to keep your device safe, to make sure you keep your financial information safe, is to use what's called patching. And that just means updating software for security flaws, whether that means updating your antivirus when updates are available, or just generally updating your phone, tablet, and computer software whenever new updates become available. It is super important to do that for security, not just for banking, but for all computing purposes. So make sure as soon as new updates become available on your device that you download them, because for the most part, what those updates are changing, despite sometimes there being larger, you know, visual changes and stuff like that is mostly security software. So please do make sure that you update that. Create a really strong password. It is your really main line of defense is your password on these accounts. So make sure that you're creating a really strong one, um, one that is not easily guessable by others, uh, but that you will be able to remember and use. Sign up for security alerts. You should have the option within your bank online banking system to sign up for security alerts, meaning you get uh, dings when you know your account has been accessed on a new device and stuff like that. Make sure those are turned on just so you can track any um, activity that may not be from you. And where offered, always use two-factor authentication. Uh, this can be as simple as adding both an email and a phone number to your online financial accounts. That way, identities of people trying to access your account or your identity can be confirmed 
Uh, say you log in on your computer, you might receive a text message on your phone asking if it's really you signing in so that you can confirm and make sure it's actually you. So always use two-factor authentication where available and possible. And when you are being approached by someone, whether it is by email, phone, or text, and they are claiming to be a financial, financial institution or bank, always be suspicious whenever you are asked for things such as account numbers, pins, social security number, password, and the like. The best rule of thumb to follow when you're having any sort of interaction with like this, like this is if someone contacts you, so say someone contacts you via phone or email claiming to be a, um, an employee of the bank or something like that, never share sensitive data, hang up and say no thanks or delete the email. And then if you need to confirm that that was accurate, you can then contact your bank and see if that was actually a legitimate uh, call or email. Um, but either way, you know for sure that when you're calling them, if you're calling the correct number that's on your bank card, that you're actually talking to a real representative. So always be wary of people reaching out to you and asking for that information. Um, and never give up sensitive information like that unless you are absolutely sure that you are speaking to a representative of the actual bank um, when you do so. And then one last kind of thing to consider is if you can help it, do not access your mobile banking app, even though I know it is mobile banking in a public place, especially if you are connected to a public Wi-Fi network or in a crowded area. Um, public Wi-Fi networks can be easily hacked or uh, harmful figures can easily set up and pose as free Wi-Fi networks and steal your information. And also in a crowded place, someone may be looking over your shoulder and seeing as you punch in the details for your account. So please avoid that. If you have to do it in public, make sure there's no one around you, that you are using your own cellular data network and not connected to a Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi network or do it from the comfort of home on your own personal Wi-Fi network. And if you're still unsure if you can trust online banking, just know that financial, financial institutions are held to a very high standard when it comes to protecting your money and personal identity and information. Federal and state regulations require banks and credit unions to use multiple layers of protective security in their online banking systems. And banks must make sure their banking platforms are safe and secure. So the onus um, is on them to make sure these systems are secure. You can protect yourself. And if there is some sort of reason that the banks themselves uh, are not secure, uh, for the most part, they will have to take responsibility for that and not you. So on your end, you can clean your side of the street, make sure that you're taking measures to protect your account. Um, but you, should, you can usually trust that on the end of the bank, that things are secure and safe. Now, if you still need more help, you can always reach out to your bank's customer service. All major banks have staff on hand to walk you through the online setup process and use. Uh, this should be a good intro to getting you to know it a bit better and understand it. But if you still need further help, reach out to them. Uh, they should be able to help you and help you learn the basics so you can bank in confidence and you can give your local branch a call and ask for this service um, when you do that. And know that bank staff already has your account information handy or they can look it up. And every transfer you do at the bank or with a bank staff must be kept confidential. So you can trust that when you're setting up this process, it will be protected. Um, they will not um, be able to access your account on your behalf after. So it's another layer of protection when you're use, learning to use your banking app. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions about this topic, you can always call us toll free at Cyber Seniors at 1-844-217-3057. Or you can visit us online at www.cyberseniors.org. And once again, this webinar was proudly sponsored by BreezeLine. And you can visit BreezeLine online at www.breezeline.com.